Hey everybody, Joe here with Speedway Motors. We're here with Lake Speed Junior from Total Seal, and we're here to talk about piston rings, and in particular, piston rings for nitrous. Oh yeah. What do you gotta do? Well, everyone loves nitrous because it's pretty easy horsepower, right? The, the trick is, if you're running a very low level of nitrous, not like that giant bottle of nitrous right there, you, what you basically need to do is just open up the end gap, because the more power the engine makes, the more heat it's going to make. Well, the more heat that goes into it, well, that end gap starts to tighten up. And you don't want those end gaps touching together because it's a bad day for your engine. What happens if you butter ring? Okay, when you, when you butter ring, what will happen is the ring will want to continue to expand. So now it's actually driving the ring completely into the cylinder wall. So it will actually begin to scuff uh, the cylinder walls. It can actually break the ring. It can even break the piston potentially. All bad things. You know, you, you don't want to butt your rings. So when you're adding more temperature because you've added more nitrous, you need to open up that end gap for it. Now, fortunately, when you get a set of total seal piston rings, it actually comes with an end gap guide. And we basically say, for how much nitrous you're running, how much end gap you need to open it up. So that's the important thing. When you're, say, less than a 200 shot of nitrous, you can typically use the old school ductile molly type of rings, which have been around for you know, 40, 50 years, which is kind of the, the standard in the industry for performance stuff. But when you start going more nitrous, big power, as much nitrous as you have cubic inches, you're going to need to move away from that type of ring material and go to a steel ring, either a stainless ring like this or even potentially an M2 tool steel ring for the most extreme nitrous applications. And the reason for that is that this material can only handle so much temperature. This is ductile iron with a molly face coating on it. This is stainless steel with a PVD coating on it. And then beyond that is tool steel. So basically, as you go up in the amount of nitrous, you have to improve the ring material. One of the issues we come across with increasing levels of nitrous is that the engines typically have one of a little bit of detonation. That's the, the upside downside of nitrous is that it has a very fast flame speed. It makes a lot of power, so the engines can tend to rattle a little bit. Well, when you get into that edginess of nitrous, what will happen is this ductile molly ring, because it's a ductile iron ring with that molly face coating. In fact, if you took these two rings and you put them under a microscope, what you will see is on the face of that ring, that molly ring, you'll see that iron channel, and then you're gonna see in that middle of that iron channel, a, the molly sprayed in. So you're gonna have an iron on the outside, then you're gonna have this silver, you know, molly coating in there. Well, that molly is porous, it's soft, it makes it easy for break in, but the problem is it will flake out. So under that high detonation, high cylinder pressure, it wants to crack and break, and cracking and breaking is not good for your rings. So that's the kind of the material limit of that molly. But when you go to that steel ring, now uh, that ring material is better. You know, stainless can, is uh, material property wise, it, it's stronger. It can handle the heat better. And now because that's a PVD coating that's applied in a vacuum chamber, guess what? Now that thing is not cracking and flaking off. So it can handle the abuse that nitrous gives it. So what about, you know, the other thing that people always ask about is boost. You know, mm -hmm. turbos, everybody wants to just hang a big turbo on there. Oh, yeah. what, what do you got to do there? How does that differ from nitrous? It's almost the exact same thing. Because essentially, as you add boost, you're increasing cylinder pressure. As cylinder pressure goes up, temperature goes up. And you get a little bit closer to a little bit of edge of detonation, a little bit of knock. All those things play that same role, which makes it where as you add boost, as you add nitrous, you really have to go away from the traditional ductile molly rings and move into steel because it can handle the temperature, it can handle the boost that, or the uh, nitrous so that it lives and gives you the durability you need because you want your piston rings sealing, not breaking. Again, that end gap is for expansion because if, if those ends touch each other, it's a bad, bad day. So you want to make sure you have enough end gap of course, that's a whole video by itself, but end gap is also listed in the instruction sheets on how much to do. You know, a normal rule of thumb for, you know, a forged piston that's say either 4032 or 2618 aluminum piston, you're gonna normally run, say for a street application, 
about five thousandths per inch of bore size. So just say for a four inch bore like this piston is, that's gonna be about 20 thousandths end gap between that top ring and second ring. And then you want a minimum of 15 thousandths total end gap on your oil rails. So th that whole package will put you know, most people with a typical you know, street application in there. As you go up in power, if you add boost, you add nitrous, then you have to add gap because the hotter it gets, the more those rings are gonna expand, the closer they're gonna come together. And again, you don't want them to touch, but you also don't want them to be massively loose. Although people tend to overthink that, right? We typically see people get too worried about trying to get, oh, I might, if I have 20,000 zen gap or 25,000 zen gap, I'm gonna have too much blow by. Now the reality is we have engines that have 30 thousandths in gap and they have almost no blow by. So as you try to set that gap, just think about the power level, the compression, what kind of fuel you're running. Uh, if you're running methanol E85, it tends to run a little bit cooler. You don't need as much gap, but typically if you're doing that, you're running more compression. So you're gonna have to add that gap right, back. Right. Thank you, I, le <laughs> I learned something today. So there's plenty more information on the toolbox at SpeedwayMotors.com. Thank you, Lake, and thank you, everybody, for watching.